virtual service. My name is Patrice Hall and thank you for joining us today. Before we hear the word of God from our very own Dr. Dennis W. Bishop, I have a few announcements to share. If you are celebrating your birthday in the month of February, stand up and make some noise. Happy birthday, First Watown family and friends. Corporate Sunday School will continue to be held virtually. The classes will be conducted via Zoom from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Sundays until further notice. Join us for Noonday Bible Study on each Wednesday. There's a lot going on at FWBC. To stay connected, join our mailing list. Go to our website and fill out the form today so you won't miss out. We thank you for your continued support of FWBC. It is important during these unprecedented times that we continue to contribute to our church home. We invite you to give. 
visit our website at www.firstwalltown.org and click the giving link. We are so happy to have you here at Virtual First Church. Here at First Wall Town, everybody is somebody and nobody is all but Christ. Be blessed. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory and we give you honor today. We sense your presence in this place and we thank you for everything that you are doing with us, in us, and through us. Lord, would you let the words of our mouths, meditations of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so now here we are again today with our elbows pressed against the window sills of heaven and we would see Jesus. Bless us today in our time together. Heal, set free, and deliver. And we give you all the glory and the honor for it is in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this word transform us. Let this word speak to our hearts and pray that we will be better servants for you in Jesus' name. If you're in agreement with that prayer, go ahead and give a great big amen. Say it like you mean it. Amen. Just saying I'm in agreement with that prayer and it is so. Come on, let's worship the Lord today. Bless God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship. Oh, yes. Woo. I am weak and I need. I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour. Let me through the darkness thy face to see lead me oh lord lead me help me tread help me tread in the paths of righteousness be my aid when satan and sin Oppress. I am putting all of my trust in thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. I am lost. I am lost. If you take your hand from me. I am blind without thy light to see. Lord, just always let me thy servant be. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Come on, y'all, lead me. Lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me. Let this be your prayer today. Lead me, lead me, guide me along. Come on and join us wherever you are. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk. One more time, lead me, guide me, come on, y'all. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. 
pray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Lead me, oh Lord, come on. Amen and amen. God bless you today. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Thank God for the day. It's the day he's made and we have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Let's get ready for the word of God. We have the word today. We will be giving the invitation and praying with you and for you and we will also be having our communion together today, corporate communion. So we ask you to get your elements ready so that by the time we get down to that place in this service, we'll all be ready to commune together with whatever you are eating or drinking and those in this auditorium as we are eating and drinking of this bread and this cup. God bless you today. I want to go back to the series that we have been doing since New Year's Eve, and that is talking about Mary's doxology, her Magnificat as we'll get to it a little later on. Her hymn of praise, as many of you are doing your own doxologies daily now, I would hope and suppose. You've been hearing it enough. We've been talking about it enough. And so you ought to be doing your own doxology now. That is praising God from whom all blessings flow for whatever it is that you're praising him and blessing him for and for what you're blessing him to, yes, for and yet to. Whatever you're going to that you're thanking God in advance, whatever he's doing that you have not seen the manifestation yet, but in your doxology, you're praising him for that which he is yet to do. Mary had her own doxology. Our base scripture is St. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, and we have just been taking bite-sized pieces of these passages of scripture, St. Luke chapter 1, and we have been dealing with, as a whole, verses 26 through 38, and then we'll go on even into verses 45, 46, 47, somewhere down in that area. But just stay with us as we continue in this series today. However, if you're reading for the sake of reading, let's do St. Luke chapter 1. And as you well know by now, I'll be reading it from the King James Version. And then I'll also be reading it from the Amplified Version. St. Luke chapter 1. And uh, what I want to do today is take two passages of Scripture in St. Luke chapter 1, and that is verses 37 and 38. 37 and 38. And here's what it says in verse 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God, very simple statement, nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38 and Mary said, here was her response to the angel Gabriel after all of the things that she had heard and pondered. And if you remember, we've already dealt with the first point where she talked, where we've been talking about how Mary listened in a new way. I want to give you the second point today, but notice those words in verse 38. And Mary said... She did not speak until after she had listened in a new way. And she considered or pondered all of the things that she heard. And here's her response. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel, listen to this, I like this. After Gabriel got the response, which wasn't, her response to him, 
but her response to the Lord, but when he got the assignment or the response, the Lord released him from his design, uh, assignment. After she responded, after giving great thought, consideration, as we've already talked about, she responded. Now, it didn't say anywhere in this passage of Scripture that Gabriel left her until after she responded. And notice what it says here. She says, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word, and notice that last phrase, and the angel Gabriel departed from her. Thus ends the reading of the King James. Look at it, look at it from the uh, Amplified Bible, or let me give it to you from the Amplified Bible. And it's basically almost saying the same thing, just a little change of word. For no word from God shall be void of power. No word from God shall be void of power. Verse 38, and Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And there it is again. And the angel basically said the same thing King James says, and the angel departed from her. Let's probe a little bit. Let's talk. Let's dissect. Let's unpack these two passages of Scripture as best we can. Now, we've talked about how Mary listened in a new way. Last time we were together, I asked a question to those that were in the auditorium and to those of you who are in the auditorium virtually, I asked a question, have you got your ears on? Are you listening to what the Word of God is saying? Are you listening to what God is really saying? Not so much as listening to a figure or an icon or a figure, but listening in a new way to what the Spirit is saying unto His people. We've talked about how Mary listened in a new way, but then there's a second thing I want to give you today. And after she listened in the new way, and after we listen in a new way, Here's my second point. Submit and surrender should be our response. Submit and surrender should be our response. Now, notice how encouraged Mary was. And I went back and looked at these words again and again. And, and notice how encouraging that phrase itself probably sounded to Mary as it sounded with me hearing myself repeated over and over and over again. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what I did, I practiced that scripture as many of you often do. Went back. And said it again and again and again. And that scripture just kept, that phrase kept resounding in my ear, my heart, my spirit. Listen, listen to what it says. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Listen to that. With God, and you may want to underscore that word nothing because that's the encouraging key to the phrase, nothing is or shall be impossible. Let me say it like this. Nothing is impossible with respect to any of God's promises. Now, when I started thinking about it in that sense, that nothing shall be or is impossible with respect 
to any of God's promises, I had to, first of all, consider if what I am hearing is really a promise from God. Because a lot of times I think we say that God spoke to us or God promised us or God told us. And sometimes I think it can be our intellect, our desire, our subconscious that's sometimes speaking to us concerning some desire that we might have, and we consider that to be the promise from God. And so when it is not delivered or when it doesn't come through or when it doesn't happen or when we don't see the manifestation of it, sometimes we have a tendency to think that God failed. But according to the scriptures that I've read and according to what we read right here in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, it's impossible for God to fail. And then a little later on, I hope I'll have enough time to give you another a few passages of Scripture that I want you to meditate on. But, but, but from what I have read and from what I'm seeing and from what I believe, according to the Scriptures, it's impossible for God to fail. Now, whatever He does, we have to accept His will and what God allows but I think we ought to be very cautious about how we say God promised me something until we know for sure that it's not our subconscious. It is not a desire or a strong desire that I have. And so I think I'm hearing in my spirit that it's God promising me this. No, when you go back and phrase it the way I did it the last time and saying nothing is impossible with respect to any of God's promises, then you got to know what the promise of God is. And let me tell you, his promises are yea and amen according to the scripture. And another thing about the promises of God is that every promise that he's given to us in the book, let me tell you, he has already fulfilled, delivered it, and it's already ours. But now anything he speaks to us personally about a promise of his, let's make sure it's God. Notice how encouraging this must have been to Mary. Notice when she heard the angel Gabriel give his report, give what God spoke to him, give what the Lord said directly to him to bring to Mary. It had to have been very encouraging for her to simply grab a hold of the fact that with God, nothing is impossible now with man it is but with God she says nothing is impossible then notice this when I read this passage of scripture this is the beautiful message that the angel announced to Mary about the conception and the birth of the lovely Lord Jesus who is the Messiah of Israel he is going to be and is now the savior of the world. All the way back from Genesis with Boaz being the example, he is now the kinsman redeemer of humanity. He is the son of the sovereign God who is the highest authority in the universe. And the angel says to Mary very encouraging words that I feel were most encouraging because for me to hear myself quoting, Dennis, with God, nothing is impossible in respect to his promises those are encouraging words. <laughs> that, that, that says a lot to me. When, when, when the highest order of the universe speaks and says nothing is impossible concerning any promise that I have given to you, that encourages our hearts. The Lord also promised when you go back and look at the scripture and he fulfilled it. The Lord promised that the seed of the woman 
all the way back in the book of Genesis, would crush the serpent's head. And nothing can change that promise. When you go back into Genesis again, you'll find that God promised Abraham an earthly inheritance whose builder and maker is God, and this can never be altered because nothing is impossible with God. In studying the scriptures, I found that God promised David an eternal throne he promised David an everlasting kingdom, and nothing can change or alter or annul this promise. For what is impossible with man, the scripture says, is possible with God. What you and I cannot do because we are not the highest authority of the universe we operate in the name of the highest authority, but we're not the highest authority of the universe. And so what you and I cannot do, God can do it. And nothing, my brothers and sisters, is impossible with him. Now, when I look at this truth, let me tell you that this truth is equally true for you as it is for me. Nothing, and somebody write that in if you can, nothing, or say it to yourself, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with respect to any of God's promises. And the lovely Lord Jesus is the fulfillment of that God's promised for all things, the scripture says, are of him, they are in him, they are by him, the scripture says, and they are for him. And with him, then Mary, then you, whoever, whatever your name is, go ahead and put it there, nothing is impossible with God. Let me tell you, God is the power, and I'm thankful this morning. God is the power behind every one of his promises, and God is the truth behind all of his word. He's the power. He didn't have to rely upon another source. He didn't have to rely upon Duke Energy. He doesn't have to rely upon any other energy source. God, when you study the scripture, is the power behind every one of his promises. We've just come out of a couple of weeks of storm, snowstorm, ice storm. And some of the first announcement that they were giving when they were talking about the storm that was coming is for people to prepare, to get ready in case you were to lose your what? Your power. Help me somebody. Thank God the church has power. <laughs> Thank God the Christian has power. Thank God the believer has power. But how many of you all heard that announcement like I did? It was getting us prepared, telling us what to do. Make sure you've got flashlights. Make sure you've got batteries. Make sure you've got water. Make sure you've got food. Make sure you've got shelter. Make sure you've got blankets or jackets. Listen, if, if you lose your power, they were saying that we have enough people that we've contracted out to that hopefully we can get the power restored as quick as possible, but they couldn't tell you how quick, quick was going to be. And some of us can attest to the fact that you may have lost power and they restored it. Some didn't lose any power. But oftentimes, whenever a storm is coming, that is the first thing they try to prepare us for is for power shortages and outages. Well, I stopped by here to tell you in these few minutes that I'm so thankful that God doesn't have to depend on another power source. 
because he is the power behind every one of his promises. Every one of them are moved and manifested by the power of God. Matter of fact, we sometimes sing in the church, everything is moving by the power of God. God. And they were going into the chorus. I woke up this morning by the power of God. I, I, I was clothed in my right mind because of the power of God. Thank God he is the source behind every one of his promises, which then says to me, it doesn't make the promise an iffy promise. If he was depending on some other source, the promise might be iffy. But since he is the power behind the source and the source behind the power of the promise, it says to me, it's not an iffy promise. And that's why the writer of the scripture could say every promise of God is yea and amen because he is the power behind every one of his promises. God is the omniscience behind all. All of his counsel. And he is the supernatural mind behind all of his plans. No promise from God will ever fail of its fulfillment for every directive that proceeds from the mind and the mouth of the Almighty must reach its ultimate completion. And the reason why is because of the words that Gabriel spoke to Mary as he was given from the Holy Spirit that nothing is impossible with respect to any of God's promises. And so when Mary started contemplating that and thinking about that, she was probably saying some of the same stuff that we say well, what about this? Nothing, Mary. Well, look at it this nothing, Mary. Well, maybe just this time he could be nothing, Mary, is impossible with God. He is the power behind his promises. Look for a minute at Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. I want to give you some promise scriptures about how faithful God is and how he is the power behind his promise. Numbers, what did I say? Numbers chapter 23. And I want us to notice Verse 19, first from the King James, and then I'll do it from the Amplified Bible. Notice, notice verse, 20, verse 19 of Numbers 23, and listen to what it says here. Listen to what he says. He says in verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man. That he should repent. Hath he said. And shall he not do it. Or hath he spoken. And shall he not make good on his promise. Let me give it to you from the Amplified. Probably saying about the same thing. But let's see what it's saying. God is not a man that he should lie. Same thing King James says. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and will he not do it? Or hath he spoken and will he not make it good? I like that. Listen to what he is saying. God isn't a man that he should lie. How many of y'all know if he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. If he said it, he will do it. 
Has God ever promised you anything? And I mean, you really knew it was God and God brought it to pass. And some things he may not have even told you, but you were trusting him. You were relying upon him. You was depending upon him. And you sensed in your spirit by faith that God's going to come through for me on this situation. And God showed up. God came through. God manifested. God revealed. God brought it to pass. He brought it to full fruition. He completed it as the scripture says he's not a man then that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent if he said it he'll make good on it look again with me at uh, Hebrews chapter 10 all the way back over in the New Testament Hebrews chapter 10 Hebrews 10 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody just write hallelujah somewhere. Put it on a piece of paper. Write it in the comment section, wherever you are, whatever you're doing when you listen to this. Somebody just write hallelujah. One of our deacons was talking to us one time and he said to us, he said, uh, he said Hebrews must be referring to uh, men making coffee. And I said, what do you mean by that? How do you, how do you, he said, because it said Hebrews. <laughs> he, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. If you're there, all right, I'm here now. Hebrews 10. Notice verse 23. And I like this. Verse 23 of Hebrews 10. And here's what he says here. He says, let us, talking to us, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. That means not wavering in what you believe about your faith. Hold fast to the profession of your faith. If your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's saying hold fast to that. There are many agents and agencies that are out here in the world right now trying to shake our faith, trying to shake what we believe about God, trying to destroy our heart's thoughts that we've had for many years about God, about him saving us, about him healing us, about him blessing us, about him delivering us. So many things are going on in the world right now that it's very easy if we're not holding fast to the profession of our faith. So many things are happening out here that can shake our faith. We can see things happening that we have prayed and trusted and believed God for. And sometimes we will say, I know what God promised me. I know I heard him speaking to my spirit. I know he told me he was going to do this. I know he told me he was going to save my family member. I know he told me he was going to heal my friend from the sickness that they were suffering or dealing with. And now look at it. It's gone the opposite way. And sometimes those things, if we're not holding fast to the profession of our faith, some of those things can shake our faith. Some of those things can sometimes cause us to doubt whether or not we're ever saved. I, I don't know if I'm really saved because when I pray, things don't seem to be happening the way I'm expecting them to happen or the way that I'm believing. I know I had trust. I know I had faith. I know what God said, and it goes in the opposite direction. He says here, listen to this, hold fast to the profession of our faith. How are we going to do it? Without wavering, without going back and forth without looking at circumstances that have us up today, down tomorrow, without going into the church and getting a word from the Lord, and we come out feeling good about the word that we have, and we're on fire, and I'm going with Jesus all the way, and I'm going to walk with him every day, and I'm going to tell of his goodness, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and then before Sunday evening is gone, or by the time Monday morning gets here, we get hit with something that causes us to waver in our our faith. He said, no, no, don't do that. He says, let us hold fast. That means stick to your testimony. Stick to your word. Stick to trusting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Stick to believing. Stick to relying upon. Stick to what is truth about the promises of God concerning your relationship and your faith with him. And he says, 
Do it without wavering. Do it without being tossed back and forth. Do it without being up and down. Do it without being in and out in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. He says, find a leveling off place while you are clinging to and holding fast to your heart's belief, your profession. He says, do it without wavering. And here's what I wanted to get to. For he is faithful that promised. In other words, if God promised it, then how many of y'all know God can and will deliver on it? Let me give it to you from the Amplified, and then my time is just about coming and gone. Let me give it to you from the Amplified. He brews, chapter 10. Verse what? 23. All right. Hebrews 10, 23. Now, when we were back over in Numbers, it was Numbers 23, 19. Don't y'all run out and play that this week. <laughs> now we're in Hebrews 10, 23. Somebody right now saying, oh, Lord, that sounds like it has a relevant ring to it. I might go in and see if I can hit that one this week. All right. Hebrews 10, 23. Let me read it from the Amplified. Maybe saying the same thing. Uh, just a little different. 22, 23. Where are you? There it is. There it is. All right. He's saying basically the same thing. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our hope or our faith that it wavers not. For he is faithful that promised notice that he is faithful that promised so here's my conclusion right here and I want to flip back to Mary in Luke chapter 1 grab those two scriptures meditate on them well let, while I'm in Hebrews while I'm in Hebrews let, let me give you another passage that just came to mind Hebrews uh let me make sure I'm let me see if I'm right I believe it's Hebrews chapter 6 I think it is Hebrews 6, I don't have this one down, but, 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 but it just came to mind. Yeah, Hebrews 6, 13. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews 6, 13. Here's another one. Uh, let's look at verse 11. Start at verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. And time won't permit me to elaborate on these, but let me give them to you for meditation. And I'll come back when we come back again and I'll kick in with this one. I didn't have this one in my notes. Hadn't looked at it. Holy Spirit just dropped it on me. I knew I've read it before, seen it before. Listen to what he is saying here. Verse 12, that you be not slothful. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This is good, y'all. Look at verse 13. That's what the Holy Spirit gave me a minute ago. Look at verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear. By himself. Now, what he was saying here in verse 13, everything that God promised faithful Abraham, father of every one of us of faith, he says there was nobody else greater to swear by. He couldn't swear by Isaiah. He couldn't swear by Ezekiel. He couldn't swear by Job. He couldn't even swear by Abraham. He couldn't swear by any of the major or minor prophets. He couldn't swear by me. He couldn't swear by any of you. Notice what he says here. But when he made Abraham the promise, every promise he made to Abraham, he had no greater than himself to swear by. In other words, here's what he 
probably would have said if he was talking in our day and time and in our terms. Here's what he probably would have said. He probably would have said, I promise by my own name. <laughs> he, he, he probably said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And Abraham was probably saying, well, God, are you sure about that? I, I, I'm just a human like anybody else, and you're going to make me the father of many. Are you sure about that? He said, Abraham, I, I wish I had something. I, I, wish, I, could, I, I wish I could tell you that I, I promise you this on my daddy's grave. But his daddy, God's daddy, didn't have a grave. He said, so I got to swear it by my own name. I, I, he, he says, what, I, what I'm saying to you, it doesn't get, here it is, it doesn't get any better than this. And you just got to trust me because it is dependent upon my, here it is, own character. Whew, thank you, Holy Spirit. He, he says, Abe, you got to trust me on this. If I had a greater power or a greater name or some name I could drop or some name I could throw in for you, I would. But because there is nobody's name greater than mine and nobody's promise any better than mine, I'm going to swear it by my own self. In other words... It doesn't get any better than that. And when Mary heard these words from the angel Gabriel, Mary became, according to verse 38, she became submissive and she surrendered and my time has come and gone so that we can get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper after giving the invitation but hopefully in our next session together I can go back into verse 38 share some things with you about Mary but I want to share some things with you that the Holy Spirit has dropped on me concerning this message concerning your life and my life. Mary heard these words. A little further up in this passage, it says, she considered what she heard. But when the angel said to her, for with God, nothing is impossible she turns around in her consideration hmm. I told you earlier she's been to the church before she's been to the synagogue she's heard teaching she's heard preaching probably was even saved She had heard the promises of God before as they taught them in the synagogue. And now the angel confirms that with God, nothing is impossible. And when you get down to verse 38, she submits and she surrenders. And I didn't get to talk to us about how that ought to be our response when we hear God in a new way. Or when we listen to him in a new way. But I will come back and talk about it the next time. I want to talk to you about some of our responses when we hear God in the new way as she did. And I want to ask you the next time we're together if your response is submission and surrender. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our time together today. 
Thank you for what your word has spoken to every one of us. Would you let the words of our mouths once again and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. You've promised to be with us. And so we trust that promise. You've been with us every step of the way. You're with us right now. And Lord, whatever our lot, you have taught us to say, it's well with our souls. And so, Father, speak to the heart of every person today under the sound of my voice. I pray that somebody have heard this word in a new way and will be convinced today that I need to submit and surrender to what God is asking me to do telling me to do, commanding me to do, calling me to do. Somebody will submit and surrender to what you have anointed them to do. Whether the task seems small or great or large or enormous to some of us, that they will submit and surrender today and say, Lord, I hear you and I'm listening to you in a very new way now. And so I submit, I surrender suffer it to be so unto me as Mary gave her response if you're that person today God bless you be filled with the spirit of God submit and surrender to his call on your life to what he's asking you to give or to do and do it faithfully as unto the Lord if you're a person today that's not saved and the spirit of the Lord has spoken to you today and you realize that with God, nothing is impossible. Sometimes when we get down to invitations, people say, I'm the worst of a sinner. God can't save me. Oh, yes, he can. Oh, let me tell you, sinner man, woman, boy, girl, with God, nothing is impossible. You may think it's impossible for you to be saved, but God doesn't think that. And so today, if you would just grab a hold to that, one sentence, that one phrase that with God, I know I can be saved. I've done a lot of sinful things, but I know God is capable of saving me. And would you join me right now and pray this prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to you. I want you to live in me, in my heart, in my life. I want my character to be your character. I want to stop doing the things that I'm doing that are against your word and your will and your way. I want to stop sinning and I want to live the life that you would have me to live as best I can. And then I want to know that because I am saved, I can ask you for forgiveness when I do fall short of your glory. And so, Jesus, today I'm asking you to come into my heart and into my life and save me from my sin and make me a servant or a disciple of yours. And I believe you for it today in Jesus' name. And I confess right now, Lord, it's not impossible for you to do. And I thank you for saving me today. According to Romans 10, 17, if you've called upon or faith comes by hearing, hearing come by the word. Romans 10, 13, if you've called upon the name of the Lord, he says you shall be saved. Go ahead and thank God for your salvation today. If you are a backslider, let's pray 1 John 1, 9. Father, I've sinned and come short of your glory. I'm a backslider. I've stepped out of the pathway of right and righteousness. And I ask you today to forgive me. And restore me as only you can. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And I thank you for it right now. Based upon your word. And with you nothing is impossible. Thank you for restoring me today. And my fellowship with you. In Jesus name. Father bless every home now. Oh God. With you nothing is impossible. Whatever is going on in homes right now Father. Whether it's sickness and, and in need of healing. Whether it's finances and somebody's in need of financial blessings, whether it's sons, daughters, uh, husbands, wives, parent, children, children, parent relationships, whatever it is. Now, Father, we lay it at your feet and we declare together today that with you nothing is impossible. Father, work miracles now as only you can. Be the Lord of our homes and the Lord of our lives. And the Lord of our relationships. 
the Lord of our churches. Bless pastors and churches everywhere today. I pray that you would heal and restore. And I pray that you would move by your power and by your spirit. And we thank you for it today. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name. And go ahead and shout with me. With God, nothing is impossible. And you begin to bless God right now. There you have it. We're getting ready now for our communion and thanking God for this time of being able to commune with him. And I want you to come to this communion today with this one thought in mind. With God, nothing is impossible. God bless you. Let's get ready for our Lord's Supper. I will be with you, as the song says, if you'll only trust me. Yes, hallelujah. Let's get ready for the communion. Trust me, says the Lord. Come on, here's a time where we can just say to God, Lord, I trust you. Help me to trust you even more. Father, I trust you right now. Thank you for Jesus today, but help me to trust you even the more. God, I believe you, but help thou my unbelief. God, I've heard what your word says, and I'm trying to wrap my thinking around this thing. Don't just wrap your thinking, wrap your faith around what he says. And tell him, God, I trust you because with you, nothing is impossible. Yes. Go ahead and get your elements ready. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Let's say this one time. I will be with you. I will be with you. That's what the Lord says to us. I will be with you. No matter how it looks or where you're going and what you're going through. I will be with you if you will only trust me trust me trust me before we commune the Lord is saying this to somebody I'll fight your battle, I'm able to do it. I'll fight your battle. With me, nothing is impossible. Listen to this. I'll fight your battle if you will only Trust me, trust me, trust, even if it doesn't look like I'm fighting, I'm fighting for you, I'll fight your bad, may look like you're losing, but I'm fighting for you, that's what he is saying, I'll fight your battle this is for somebody today go ahead and get it I'll fight your battle if you will only trust me I'm fighting for you trust me I've already got the victory says the Lord Trust me, one time I am, I am that I am. I have all power, I have all power. I will believe. Only if you will only 
Trust me, Dennis. Trust me. Just trust me. Trust me. Some things you're going through, just trust me. Trust me. If you're lonely, if you will, whatever your name is, you put your name there. I had to put me there. That's what the Lord is saying to me right now. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like physically, just trust me. Trust me. If you'll only trust me, all will only trust me. Just trust me. Trust me. However I do it, just trust me. Trust. God bless you, Father. Thank you for Jesus today. Thank you for what this bread represents and what this cup represents. For it represents the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. His whole body. Not his bruised body. Not his fragmented body. Not his broken body. Because we know the scripture says not one bone in his body was broken on that day. It represents his whole body. And so we thank you today that as we eat and drink together, we receive the wholeness of our healings, the wholeness of our faith, the wholeness of our joy and our peace and our peace of mind concerning things that may be troubling some of us. We receive the wholeness today by saying thank you and it is so in Jesus name and father even as the spirit ministers to us right now anything that we're receiving that may be contrary to how we thought it was supposed to work or happen teach us how to say thank you and that it's well because he is still whole and keeping us whole in our minds and in our spirits. Thank you for a whole relationship with Jesus. And we bless you today. Now bless these elements, consecrate them, purify them, and sanctify them as only you can. Change them from a carnal food to a spiritual food like unto his own glorious body. And we give you glory in Jesus' name today. With you. I will be with you if you will only trust me. Woo, trust me, says the Lord. Trust me. Trust. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, the scripture says, took bread. And after he blessed it and broke it, he says, this is my body, my whole body, my healed body, my well body, my strong body, my faithful body, my sacrifice that I willingly give to you. My body given for you, take and eat ye all of it and behold in the process of it. Be with you. If you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. Likewise, he took the cup while he was supping with them that night. This is my blood in the new covenant or the new testament given for you. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you show my death till I come. Take and drink ye all of it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Thank you today for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I am that I am. 
I am, let's go home, y'all, that I am, I have all power, God bless you, I will, good evening, good morning, God bless you, deliver, if you Trust me, trust me, trust me, if you will only trust me, trust me. You may be crying, but just trust him. Trust. Tears may be streaming down, but if you'll only, you will only, will only trust. Pain may be racking your body, but he's saying, trust me, trust me, trust me. If you will only. Trust me, trust me, that you have it, trust me. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and continue to give you his shalom, his peace. May he bless you in your basket, your field, your store, and your barn. Bless you to plenty and to overflowing, down, sitting, up, rising, going out, coming in from this time forth. Bless you in your basket, your field, your store. Bless your seed and your seed seed. And grant unto you traveling grace and mercies. And from my family, from all of us here at FWBC, we love you. And God be with you, and you go ahead and give it back to me and my family and all of us here at FWBC. God bless you. Thank you for our time together today. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.